Hi everyone, we are back here for chapter five. We're talking about consumer behavior. And it's really important for an advertiser um, to understand consumer behavior. It's a process that people go through when they are deciding what they're going to buy. So advertisers need to respond to that process that people go through. So we're gonna talk a little bit about that. And again, a lot of these are things we talked about um, in uh, BU 151, so just a little bit more in depth. Okay, so here we go. The, oh, why is that not ha why is that happening? Here we go. It's a little bit better. A little look at the framework of where we are with this chapter. So um, we're going to be looking at um, decision maker, the consumer as decision maker, and also as the uh, consumer as a social being, which has a huge impact on both of those environments. Make a big impact. Okay. So this whole idea, we talked about integrated brand promotion. This is an example of integrated brand promotion in action. Target, whatever you see an ad for Target, <coughs> excuse me, you always see the bullseye. So you recognize that it's almost become synonymous with Target, their logo. So consumer behavior are all things that are related to how humans operate as consumers. Um, and again, a review from BU 151, the process for the buying, the decision is you recognize you have a need, you look for information, and you evaluate the alternatives. You purchase something, and then there's the post-purchase behavior. So there it is, just in a little different format. Need recognition, it's the same thing, just, um, just in more picture form. Okay, so decision-making process versus need recognition arises when um, someone's arises when one's desired state of affairs differs from their actual state of affairs so what you want to be is different than what you actually are and then there's some sort of discomfort that um, motivates action so maybe you need new clothes maybe you need a new home maybe you need a new car maybe you need uh, you know to eat maybe you need workouts clothes whatever but something what you realize you have a need, and, and you need to have the, the, the motivation to go buy it. So you can go two different, a couple different ways. One is this idea of the internal search that's um, based on prior experience with the products in question. So what has your previous experience been with running shoes or basketball shoes or whatever you may be buying? But the evoked set are the set of brands that come to mind when you think when you hear about the category. And then consideration is the set of brands that you're going to consider for future purchase purpose. So they might be the same, but chances are uh, the consideration set is smaller than the evoked set. So um, then you do an external search. You might visit retail or online stores. You're going to look ask friends and family for information. You might look on um, uh, look at professional product evaluations. You might look online. You know you might. Uh, Try it out, whatever. Okay, and then you evaluate the alternatives. Um, and everyone has different evaluation criteria. It could be price, it could be quality, it could be size availability, it could be color, uh, whatever it may be. Whatever it is, whatever it is that you're looking for, you as the consumer is looking for. All right, and the consumer makes the decision and the sale is made. So there are a couple of different Things. Uh, trials, you're trying it for the first time. Conversion is that you have repeat purchases, purchasers. A brand ambassador is someone who becomes a quote apostle and spreads the word about the brand. You know, they love Apple, they love Nike, they love Under Armour. Um, and then they also consider post purchase behavior as well. So, the, um, you know, how you feel after you make the purchase. So, here we go a, a target encouraging purchasing. Sit, stay, shop. Again, we see the logo both time, twice in that ad. And so they're encouraging you to spend time at Target and, and buy things. So then you go through post-purchase use and evaluation. So um, customer satisfaction is the, is, did you have a good post-purchase experience? Did the product meet or even exceed your ex expectations? So sometimes, though, people suffer from cognitive dissonance, also known as uh, buyer's remorse. It's some sort of regret after you make a difficult decision. Generally speaking, this is for purchases that are high in price. Um, you know, maybe a winter coat or winter boots. There are so many close alternatives and substitutes. You can actually feel the product. 
um, the a purchase is really important to you. Like you really need those boots, or you really need those skis, or you really need that winter coat, or whatever it may be. And that the product has a long, a, a long lifetime, so that you might feel like you're almost like stuck with the product if you are unhappy with it and you paid a lot for it. All right. So there are a lot of different um, levels of involvement. So in terms of the importance of the decision. So a lot of this depends on personality and uh, what your interests are, what, you know, what, how you spend your time. Um, again, the high, the high price or long-term commitment. If there's a symbolic meaning to the purchase, for example, like a car or, as I said, a coat or a piece of jewelry or something like that, that's you know, a pair of you know, status sneakers, that kind of thing. Or if there's some sort of deep emotional bond attached to the purpose or attached, attached to the purpose that you purchase, sorry, that you, know, you really are very interested in. So we'll look at a couple different modes of decision making, high involvement, low involvement, um, and the, a brand involvement and also experience. So in the upper left hand corner is um, extended problem solving. You know, you'll spend a lot of time if it's high involvement and low experience. But if you have high experience and high involvement, chances are you'll practice brand loyalty. And then low involvement, low exposure, it's you make the decision pretty quickly. You know, you are. I don't know what kind of candy bar to buy or something like that. Or if there's high experience and low involvement, you probably will go back to ha old habits that you always buy, you know, the one that has the highest quality rankings or something like that. Okay, so go through these a little bit more. Um, you have to do a deliberate, careful search. The limited problem solving are usually with common products or a limited search, you know, things of low price, a new kind of pasta, whatever. Habit of variety seeking. Um, you might just switch brands at random. Maybe you'll get a different kind of cereal, or maybe you always buy Special K. That's your habit. <clears throat> and then brand loyalty, <coughs> excuse me, is some sort of um, very conscientious commitment to find the same brand each time the purchase is made. So you always buy uh, Nike, you always buy Adidas, you always buy Under Armour, whatever it is, because you are brand loyal. You always buy Apple. Okay, so there are different types of... Um, we talk about memory with consumer behavior. So that is if people, um, it's be really beneficial for advertisers if the, uh, the words in the product are, are, are very accessible. Um, you actually remember the words in the ad. Episodic memory are actually like memories of events that have associated with that product. Or um, uh, emotion is that you might change um, you might hear, it's almost like you filter the information based on incoming um, incoming information based on some sort of loyalty you have to the brand. So you listen more with a little bit more of a critical ear to what's being said. Okay, um, and also with memory, sometimes there's too much information and you want more information or sometimes the information that they Share is not necessarily always true or it's exaggerated. It's the puffery that we talked about before in the previous chapter. There's also this idea of clutter. Uh, advertising clutter is that there's just too much information. There's the billboards and signage and, and you know pop-up ads and you know ads on, on your screen and that kind of thing. So this whole idea of clutter is really um, uh, really works against advertisers. That's why they try to pursue product placement and uh, that kind of thing, brand endorsements. Okay, so we're gonna look at it. So that first we looked at it, um, the consumer as the customer as consumer. I'm sorry, consumer is the decision maker, I, I apologize. And the second perspective we're gonna look at it is the consumer as a social being. So the idea that meaning is the focus, that um, consumer behavior is meaningfully social, that what we buy influences our our relationships and influences how we interact with others and influences how how we you know feel about ourselves around others so culture is a shared set of beliefs and values it's how people live their life and you can look at it you know there's we have the American culture that there are many things we share but then there are um, you know, other things as well so social legacy are things that you learn from their group from your group the reference group your friends your family your co-workers um, and it is going to influence how you hear ads and how you respond to them. 
So in rituals are uh, repeated formalized behaviors that involving symbols. So it's the idea of rites and rituals. So we, you know, the food we eat, that kind of thing. So there we go. Um, this is a, uh, from the book. You can take a look at it. And it's um, essentially how meaning transfers and uh, fashion and advertising uh, change people as to how they're going to decide what they're going to, to purchase. So, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that. You'll, you'll see that. That's, a, that's, a, that's, in the, that's in the textbook. Okay, so let's look at, when we talk about rituals, things that, um, daily rituals we go through. So, uh, packing lunches for children is an example here that Target uses. Um, you also uh, will, you know, you'll see a lot of family rituals, uh, family dinners, um, or outings with friends, watching the football game with your buddies, that kind of thing. So these are, you know, rituals that we can all relate to. All right, so also looking as consumer as social beings. Again, these are things that um, we, again, talked about in Marketing 151, that there are all these different influences on us, our social class, uh, our, our families, what our personal values are in terms of, you know, do we want to only buy ecologically sound products, that kind of thing. Um, what are the rituals we go through? What are our reference groups? What are our coworkers and our friends? Also, you know, uh, membership groups or groups that we want, aspirational groups, groups that we want to be a part of, what our gender is, our race and ethnicity, all of these things are going on. We talked about the buyer's black box in 151. All of these things are going on in the, in, in the consumer's head trying to, when they're trying to make a decision, what their community would accept, uh, what the general culture is, politics. So, you know, think of uh, hybrid cars, for example. Might, you might be, go through some of these if you value... Uh, the you know ecology and environmental concerns and sustainability and um, you know political factors that are going on right now and in regards to the environment, what your culture, if your community would accept it, that kind of thing. All right, so role of social class. Um, social class is kind of a funny thing. People often just immediately say, "Oh, well, social class is all about money," and it's really not just about money. It also has to do with um, your education level. It has to do with uh, your the status in your community in terms of your participation in the community and how well respected you are, what kind of power you have. It depends upon your profession. That so people who are in similar social strata again, and it's not just about wealth. It's about other things as well. Um, members of the same social strata tend to consider things in similar ways. And then it's, you know, this is then why people buy certain brands and uh, people will um, attempt to, like, advertisers will attempt to link social status uh, to certain brands. So North Face, for example, or UGG, or uh, drinking Starbucks coffee over McDonald's coffee, that kind of thing. And then there's taste. Taste is a really personal thing. So uh, it is intertwined with social stratification because it's kind of learned behavior from the people that are peer group that we spend time with. And there's also this idea of cultural capital that people, our society, societies place certain um, value on it some items over others. So, you know, for example, now, you know, giving the uh, ecology or the um, environmental twist. So, for example, uh, Bottled water could be something that people think about, or um, you know, type of clothing or brand of clothing. So ads try to uh, talk about that cultural capital, what it says to other people. You know that having this product is going to put you into a, a certain social structure. All right, so that again, another very faded ad, but in the um, you can see it in the notes and um, this idea that you know people, it's a couple going out to sort of a high end event. And the woman has a fancy dress on, and where did it come from? Target. And then also um, Doritos, with the idea of cultural capital with Doritos that you can't really, looks kind of like a, not sure what that looks like, but um, the trying to associate the snack brand with a slice of life. 
at a concert, you know, if you're at, you know, that there's this excitement of Doritos, the same excitement that you'll get at a music concert. Uh, this is um, focusing on the LGBTQ community. Super Bowl, again, this idea of excitement and some sort of excitement. And, you know, it's in such Americana, the Super Bowl, such Americana. And then um, customer involvement, this idea that they allowing customers to actually vote on, on um, using vending machines and um, what, what, what type of Doritos to buy. Okay, so role of family and identity. Family is one of the most important influences on consumer behavior. Uh, it is true, different families have different needs and they buy different things, but the influence, they're reached by different media, you know, every family, even people next door, it could depend on size, it could depend on income, it could depend on family makeup, uh, special situations. And um, people see media in different ways. So if people find these ads in different media. So there is, they have to understand who their target markets are, but as a consequence of that, to kind of catch all people with you know, there's different kinds of needs, they try to look at um, life cycle and life stage identity. So where are you in your life stage? Are you single? Are you married? Do you have children? Are you working? Are you retired? That kind of thing. Okay. So again, um, another target ad, looking at a ritual and, you know, the family moving to college, different ways to decorate your dorm room, feature products available at Target. Again, you want to go back there because that's going to help you with this very important ritual. Okay. Um, then race and eth ethnicity also is going to impact what you buy. Um, it does affect your social identity. Advertisers try to respond to it by having uh, diverse actors in their ads, but uh, you know, they, they, it depends upon the ad, it depends upon the company, it depends upon the product, it depends upon where they're airing that ad. Okay, so there are also brand political associations um, with uh, politics in terms of some being more conservative than others, because some companies being more liberal than others. Uh, sometimes it has more of an impact on, uh, with, I'm sorry, more of an impact than others. You know, people, then some products have more of an impact than others. People might want to shy away from a certain product because it has a negative political connotation owning that product. Um, okay, gender, of course, male versus female. Um, and there are many different, uh, you know, who the decision makers are and who the breadwinners are and who the shoppers are in terms of gender is gonna matter and what people purchase. So they try to focus on those things and in terms of, you know, is it, if it's more of a, if the women are making the decision, they'll focus more on the women, that kind of thing. And as um, gender roles change, uh, advertising changes as well. Okay, so let's talk about community. Um, also talking about, you know, race and politics, but community can be face-to-face, -face, a face to, you can be in a face-to-face -face community you can be in, um, you know, a, a virtual community. Uh, and then, so anyway, a brand community are groups of consumers who feel some commonality and shared purpose attached to a consumer good or service. So Apple users, Mac users, um, people who wear certain brands of clothes, people who, you know, vacation in, in you know, certain spots, that there's some sort of a brand community. And that becomes, to a certain extent, yet another reference group for you. So you want to find um, some sort of, uh, in terms of cultural branding, that makes you feel good about your culture, essentially. And by buying that, by buying that product, you create some kind of identity.
So, um, this idea of rebellion in advertising is going against the grain and, you know, buying a different product and switching, say, from bottled water to, to filtered water, that, you know, home filtered water, that kind of thing. And people these days are really, truly looking for more authenticity. And you can find that, you know, in the, when you listen to ads, carefully listen to ads on um, television or on YouTube or wherever you may be uh, consuming your ads, then um, it's this idea that it's going to create some sort of identity for you. And that um, in order to, it's a way to also a way to create brand loyalty. Okay, so when we talk about having this culturally constituted world, so it you know when we see ads, we see different. We see families that are different than us. We see people that are different than us. We see settings that are different than us, and it it creates this feeling of culture. So, um, and then from the you know whether it's you know advertising and fashion or just you know fashion system in terms of what's what is on trend, then that affects what type of um, purchase the consumer is going to make. Okay, so other factors um, that are going, we saw a similar chart earlier, other factors that are going to affect people's decision making is um, it can be the situation that you're buying the product in, uh, what your education level is, your personality, so what the packaging is like, um, personal selling, you know, people are really influenced by by you know, what someone might say to them, you know, face to face about the product, what your past experiences are, your social class, your lifestyle, uh, what types of where you see the ads being listed, your gender, your needs, all that kind of thing. So what your reference groups are, it's kind of, this really just kind of wraps everything up for the chapter and consumer behavior. But the important thing is that we have multiple, we all have multiple influences um, when we purchase something. And off, you know, oftentimes these, that their decision-making process is very personal. Of course, there are other people who buy the same products as you, and you may agree on some areas, but not on others. But the marketer, generally speaking, tries to focus on this commonality of culture that we have. Okay, thanks, everyone. That wraps up Chapter 5.